So Ajit Pai of the FCC has been chair for a little more than two years, and as you can see, he has already done so much damage. He repealed net neutrality, that's currently an ongoing legal battle, but he may be doing one more thing that, if this goes through, would cause irreparable damage potentially. Because what he's been doing is he's been empowering these internet service providers to basically do what they want. He is a right-winger who doesn't believe in regulation. He believes in self-regulation and that if the market is a failure, then it will self-correct. But the problem is that hasn't been working. So, for example, this has kind of been his approach to robocalls and spam callers. He's had this more hands-off approach. And John Oliver did a really phenomenal segment where he talked about essentially Ajit Pai's approach to robocallers has been completely inadequate. And literally under his watch, phone service is being destroyed in America. Because nine times out of ten, I'm sure you all notice, when you get a phone call, it's from a spam caller or some type of robot. So this is happening under his watch and he has the authority to do something about it and he's choosing not to. Now another thing that he wants to do, which would be a disaster, is approve another very big merger. And if he does this, this really could be damaging for consumers. Because as Gigi Sohn of Wired reports, earlier this week, FCC Chair Ajit Pai announced that he would soon be asking his fellow commissioners to approve the merger of two of the four nationwide wireless carriers, T-Mobile and Sprint. After a year of deliberation, including thousands of pages of legal and economic filings by proponents and opponents and three congressional hearings, Pai has now decided that a handful of promises made just days ago by the merging parties puts this $26 billion transaction in the public interest, and it appears that at least two of his fellow commissioners agree with him. But these promises are speculative, unsubstantiated, and entirely unenforceable. For example, T-Mobile and Sprint commit to deploying a new 5G network that would cover 97% of Americans within three years of the closing of the deal and 99% of Americans within six years. They further promise that 85% of rural Americans will have access to those networks within three years and 90% will be covered within six years, but nothing in T-Mobile's filings prove that they can meet these goals, and much like the broken promises of other big broadband telephone and cable providers, they are wildly optimistic, given that at a minimum, 8% of all Americans and nearly 25% of rural residents don't have either fixed or mobile broadband coverage today, these numbers appear to be nothing more than an enticement for the Trump FCC to declare a fake victory in the so-called race to 5G. Pai also points favorably to the company's vow not to raise prices on its services for three three years after the merger is consummated. But the mere fact that T-Mobile believes it must make this promise itself is an admission that post-merger there would not be enough competition in the wireless market to constrain price increases. So in short, this is what they're trying to do to get this merger approved. They're saying, hey, Ajit Pai, listen, if you approve of this merger, if you greenlight this, then not only will we do all of these wonderful things where we extend broadband, but then you get to boast about how when you were the FCC chairman, we expanded 5G and we expanded rural coverage. So you get to boast about it, and also you do something for a large multinational corporation that will be more than willing to employ you after you leave the FCC. But as the article states, um, they're not going to do any of this. This is wildly optimistic, and even if they did do this, let's say hypothetically speaking that all of these promises are going to actually come to fruition. Well, let's say they violate another regulation. What's going to happen? The problem is the FCC and other regulatory bodies won't really be able to do much because these companies are becoming so large, so gargantuan, that they're literally amassing more power and money than regulatory bodies. So what's happening with Comcast and NBC Universal, for example, is that whenever there's a regulation that they don't like, or if they violate a regulation, what do they do? They litigate again and again and again. And the problem is that 
governments don't have the money to keep fighting these companies in court. So they lose because all of this costs money and these companies now are so big that they have more money and as a result, more power than the regulatory bodies that are overseeing them. So they're literally becoming so huge that you can't regulate them. Because if the FCC proposes some type of rule that affects internet service providers in the future, when this shill is out of office, well, then they can say, all right, well, guess what? You think that zero rating is something that we shouldn't be doing? We shouldn't be giving our uh, streaming service preferential treatment? Sue us. And then we'll keep appealing. We'll keep appealing. And all of this costs money. So they have the money to be in a state of perma litigation. And second of all, these companies become so huge and gobble up such gigantic portions of the market that they can impose whatever anti-consumer policies they want. And you can't do anything about that. Because, you know, if you don't like, for example, what Comcast is doing, if you don't like that, you know, um, for whatever reason, they, they raise the cost of, you know, your monthly internet bill, what are you going to do? You're going to cancel, then you're left without internet. Or you have one other option that's inferior. Maybe cheaper, but maybe it uh, doesn't offer as much. Maybe it's not as reliable. So what Ajit Pai is doing here is he is single-handedly doing irreparable harm. Because he is allowing these companies to become so gigantic that one, they hurt the consumer or they can hurt the consumer by imposing anti-consumer policies. And two, they will be able to govern themselves essentially and they can thwart whatever regulation possible because they are so big now that they virtually have unlimited resources for litigation until the end of time. Whereas government is not the same. Like these regulatory bodies, they have limited resources at their disposal. So if a company wants to fight them on something, then, I mean, they, they can't do that forever. These companies can. So do you understand the problem? Ajit Pai is empowering them in a way we haven't seen. Like, he may be one of the most destructive FCC chairs ever. And one line in this article that really stood out to me, it demonstrates just how horrible Ajit Pai is. So, in the two and a half years since Pai took over the agency, it has not made one decision contrary to the interests of the big mobile broadband carriers, even in the face of uncontroverted evidence that T-Mobile, Sprint, and AT&T sold specific geolocation information to data brokers who then sold it to bounty hunters without their customers' permission, this FCC has done nothing about it. Think about how crazy this is. He did not make a single decision that's contrary to the interests of these ISPs. Now, the one thing that he did was he essentially stopped the Sinclair merger. But when it comes to, you know, these internet service providers, these broadband carriers, he has 100% of the time essentially sided with them. So let's talk about Ajit Pai's legacy here. He repealed net neutrality within a year of becoming the FCC chairman. He has allowed robocalls to essentially destroy phone service in America. And now he's allowing these companies to merge and become so gigantic that they're more powerful than regulatory agencies. That You can't govern if they have that much power. This is madness. This is insane. But this is what he's doing. Single-handedly, this one person, this one asshole shill is doing this. Ruining mobile, ruining the internet because he thinks that the market can regulate itself. Well, if you feel that way, then why do you work as the head of a regulatory body? Step down. Because these companies have one goal, and that is to increase profits. And they will step on anyone and any uh, agency in government to do that, to get more money in their wallets. And Ajit Pai is just turning a blind eye. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous. And he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.